This week, though, uh, we are going to be looking at the Raspberry Pi 4 and specifically yes. a little bit about the thermal aspects of the Raspberry Pi, it's Pi hot. 4. <laughs> it's getting <laughs> hot in here. The Raspberry Pi has been running. Oh, it is and it's like, that's why it's warm. Yeah, so it's 83 degrees here in Studio there, D. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. I, I don't do I'm well watching. with heat. Turn that thing off. It's probably good that our air conditioning has been broken for the past couple of weeks because this is a thermal test of the Raspberry Pi that 4. That is not we'll be able to see. I ever want to say. I'm glad the AC is <laughs> broke. But it works out well for us in this particular instance. Yes. The Raspberry Pi 4 is known to be a hot little yeah. piece of kit. Let's just say yeah. that. It gets hot. And when it does, yep. it rumor out. has it. It throttles itself. Yes. So, hey, if she seems pretty fast and then it gets hot, it's going to throttle itself down and run a little bit slower. Yep. You just store it in an ice chest. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Stick it in the freezer and run cables in. That's right. And it's going to run at do 1.5 gigahertz. No, don't do that. <laughs> no. Condensation, folks. Finally, I Sasha had a bad idea that I could well. say, don't do that, too. <laughs> you guys are going to say that to me. No, the, the proper thing to do is to add a heat sink. That's what oh, everybody's... That's what I oh, meant. yeah, add a heat sink to your Raspberry Pi 4. That's the right thing to do. Well, we haven't done that tonight. We're looking at the Raspberry Pi 4, 4 that gigabyte. Smoke? Oh, that is it's a lot. Little, oh, my goodness, that's a little bit of green smoke over there. Can you guys smell that? It smells we'll do like that capacitors. thing that they do on the Weather Network where you just crack an egg and the egg fries on, <laughs> on top of the Raspberry <laughs> Pi 4. Yes. I did actually put my hand on top of that case over there uh, just before the show, and I could feel the heat coming off of it. I could feel that it was a little bit warm. Not warm enough to melt the plastic, Thank goodness. <laughs> but it is, uh, it is getting a little toasty. bit warm. So we'd like to actually see if we're able to heat up that Raspberry <laughs> Pi 4 by simply running a stress test. And what that's going to do is it's going to run the, the CPU right. as hard as we can possibly run it. We're going to basically bring this thing to its knees and yeah. see if we can get it to get hot and see if we can get it to throttle. That's the thing, because we're, we've heard... So, you know, rumor has it, if you've been looking at the Raspberry Pi 4 as perhaps a desktop replacement or even just something to have on the desktop as a computer, maybe a set-top box, it'd be great for that. It's got two 4K HDMI outputs, so you can hook up two TVs, mm -hmm. theoretically. That's the idea. I mean, right. it's a powerful little beast. Except then, then it's going to get hot. If it gets hot, does it? throttle itself, which means it takes the speed and turns down the speed in order to keep it cool. I'm going to jump over here just really, really quickly. Um, so I'm just working my way over on the set. I just want to quickly show you that inside of this case is a bare naked Raspberry Pi 4. And what I mean by that is there is no heat sink and it is running. It's been running for about an hour here at Studio D and we've purposefully got it that way so that we can run some thermal tests and find out where this thing is going to fall as far as the temperature and the frequency. And frequency refers to, in this case, how fast is the processor running. Okay. Right. So the base frequency of a Raspberry Pi 4 is like 600,000. So that is 600 megahertz. Okay. So 0 0.6 gigahertz to put that into yep. current standards. Um, so I've actually got this up on my computer screen. I've SSH'd in and I have a tool on NEMS Linux. So this tool is open source. You're welcome to use it, port it, whatever you want to do. However, it does rely on the thermal data that's provided by NEMS Info, part of the NEMS Linux operating system, which is a monitoring system for Raspberry Pis and other devices, mm -hmm. single right. board computers. And it's, it allows you to monitor networks. You can find out more, even download it, and run these same tests on your device at nemslinux.com. In the root folder of NEMS Linux is a folder called NEMS admin and within that folder is a program called NEMS stress. NEMS stress uses the Linux stress command in order to, as I said, bring this thing to its knees. It's going to detect how many cores there are on the processor and then say, <laughs> we're going to max all those cores out. Nice. And it with it just all just unbelievable amounts of processing. So you don't want to do this on a 
on a production system. We're doing this on a system that's sitting up on our bench specifically to see the thermals and the frequency. So NEM stress will report a little bit of data. That data is collected by the, um, the, the frequency, the speed of the processor, has it been down clocked, and whether it is, uh, what the temperature is. So I'm going to jump over here because it is going to take about five minutes to run. Um, so let's zoom in and in that folder, ho uh, slash root, slash nems, slash nems admin, I'm just going to run dot nems and stress just like that. And we're going to let that run and it is going to take five minutes. So it's already activated NEM stress. How do I know that? I can actually switch windows here. I have another uh, terminal window and I'm going to type H top and let's look at what is happening here. You see that processor? It is maxed right out. So we were at a one, one uh, load average. We've now hit 10.38 and that load average is now 12.43 and climbing 14.4 and you see our four cores on the Raspberry Pi 4 they are 100% maxed out That's right. we're bringing that thing right to its knees right and if I task back to our stress test it's just doing its thing so if you didn't have the second window open you would just see that it's working away and you'd have yes to wait. yeah okay. I would just simply see this dot 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 but then I get the report at the end Jeff right which we're going to see and that data from the report is very important to us right. so as I mentioned is this is tracking with every little iteration so basically every second it's tracking uh, things like thermal data the frequency of the processor has it um, scaled up has it scaled down how has the temperature um, increased and then finally at the end what our averages are Oh, okay. does it get, does it also give you like a real time shot of oh it took this long to hit max and then it does uh, no it doesn't no? because okay. it's just a five minute average right okay. right so this is so what I see is that okay. and at the end is the the general report you're going to see that in just a couple of moments time uh, looking at H top again there it is still sitting at 100 percent why are we doing this I want to see so this is this is key we're all interested in the Raspberry Pi four mm -hmm. yes what difference is it going to make if we go with the stock case right right versus something a little higher end why would we want to spend 30 40 dollars on a raspberry pi 4 case that's the question that we're setting out to possibly answer this week cuz the alternative is throwing it in a freezer that is, that's a very expensive case that uses a lot of electricity. That's right. This is true. But it makes ice cubes. It's true. This is also true. TV dinners are a thing, that's right. not currently a thing with our solution that we have that's here. That's how you cook that's a TV dinner. <laughs> we can probably do it. We're going to find out, Sasha, if we can cook a TV dinner with this thing if we, uh, once this thing is all said and done. So the test is a running. You know, and this, you know, Going back to the fact that you know we're now like the end of a season, yeah. you know, twelve years, the fact that we can run a test for five minutes, waiting for dots to compile on a oh, screen, and we can just fill it with you know conversation like that sounds oh, good yeah. and techy. Fill five minutes. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Is that actually on our script? No. Okay, dot. <laughs> okay, so dot. As far as I'm these, just reading what I see here. Fair enough. But yeah. as far as these tests are going, what is it doing? So like for somebody who's running this test, yeah. it's going. How is it heating it up? Like why? Check out the Linux stress command. So NEMS stress. What it does is it creates several instances of the stress command, which maxes out the processor, and it creates. I don't know, I think it's nine instances of it, and each of those instances pushes every single core right. of the processor. So it works it really, really hard. It's just a CPU test. And the only reason is to see, does the CPU get hot and does it throttle? Is it easy to accidentally do this without a stress test? Like to accidentally like max it out? <laughs> How many like tabs do you have open in Google Chrome? <laughs> right? That's the question, right? Yeah. It, yeah, because the thing is, it seems limitless. It seems like something you would just, you'd ask it to do a lot. And then all of a sudden it would get hot and it would... Slow right down. Sasha's like, I don't know if NEM stress is running, so I'm going <laughs> to run it again. 
That's who I am as a person. Just see how that goes. That checks out. Yeah. (laughs) So this week we actually have an Eladuino aluminum case that I'm going to enrobe the Raspberry Pi 4 in. Okay. And the Eladuino case, now we've seen these before for the Raspberry Pi 3s, and I absolutely love the aluminum Yes. Uh, nature of these because they're they're heat dissipating they're very well constructed they're very attractive aesthetically mm-hmm. and um, now with the raspberry pi 4 what's happened is the raspberry pi 3 cases are no longer compatible correct we've seen that like through the years raspberry pi has maintained a fairly good consistency from so uh, you know a raspberry pi 2 and then upgrade to a raspberry pi 3 you can reuse the same case right. and just get the upgrade well this now with a raspberry pi 4 you can't, you can't do that <laughs> any guesses why that is like from a no but from a from an actual physical standpoint of the uh, raspberry pi 4 the size of it must be the size is identical the how about the little yeah, the little... The, the screw yeah. holes? Yeah. Nope. Screw holes are in the same place. They're, oh. So uh, what could it be? What could make it so that it's different impossible? Peripherals? Mm, different peripherals? Different ports? You're close. Different ports, yeah. It's the yeah. dual <laughs> HDMI. So remember, the Raspberry right. Pi, up until the Raspberry Pi 4, only had a oh, single yeah. full-sized HDMI. Now, right. they have a dual mm-hmm. um, HDMI micro. So you have to have a special case in order to do that. Right. My thermal test has completed. Ooh, okay. Well, this is the NEM stress test. Here's what we know about the Raspberry Pi 4 running as it is, just in the standard case, and working that baby as hard as we can. Lowest temperature was 69627 Degrees. Somebody's got to write this down because we're going to have to refer back to this. Okay. 69. 69.627 degrees Celsius was the lowest temperature. So that CPU on the Raspberry Pi 3, uh, 4 was sitting at 69 degrees before we ever before started. We Just started. sitting there idle, yeah. doing nothing. Okay. Then as it went on, it hit 85.698 degrees Celsius. God, it's up fast. Yeah. Now, interestingly, the slowest speed at idle was uh, uh, 1.5 uh, gigahertz. So when you see 15, uh, 100 and, what is that? 1,500,000. That is, in fact, 1.5 gigahertz, the top speed of the Raspberry Pi without overclocking. Mm. Right. And then the maximum speed was the same. And when the board was hot, this is very interesting, even when it got up to 85.698, because I've heard that it will throttle after 80 degrees. It didn't throttle. It did not. It didn't. Nothing. It didn't throttle. The frequency maintained was 1.5 gigahertz. Is, now, this, is this the first time you've run this test? No, I've run it a few times just and? to see. Um, and this is this is the result without a without any kind of cooling system, which is very interesting because, uh, like you, I've only read the reviews and people yeah. talking about how well if it gets hot, it's going to throttle, and if it hits at 80 degrees Celsius, it's going to throttle. Now, is that it based didn't. on a sustained time frame? Well, this was five minutes, which I uh, sure. Right, I mean, but if maybe it, it kicks in at say ten minutes, it goes. Okay, this has been too much. I can't handle. You this. guys want to wait? <laughs> no, no. Not really. <laughs> I would but I, I just like. Has anybody <laughs> looked at the programming within the Raspberry Pi's firmware to look at where is that throttling kicking in? Yeah, I, I think that's an interesting point. Now, I do see you know at first boot. So I've had it idling. So to be fair, the goal here was to make it so that the two tests would be as close as possible. So I've had it idling for about an hour, and with that. Now, when I first turned it on, it was sitting at 600 megahertz. Right. Now we do see that even when I first started this test, it was running at 1.5 gigahertz. Right. So something about the Raspberry Pi, maybe because NEMS is doing more things than just sit and idle. NEMS right. has Nagios and everything else running and, and a MySQL server and a, a Apache 2 and everything else. So there's a little more heft going on. Uh, so, but it didn't ever scale down. Right. And I think, Jeff, the whole intention be- bet- with throttling is that when something gets hot, it's going to throttle down very quickly. Yeah, so it you would see yes. that. You would see that in that temperature increase because that's a pretty big temperature increase. You would see mm-hmm. throttling it if throttling were to occur. So at 85.698 degrees Celsius, it still did not throttle over a five-minute threshold. Mm-hmm. So 
would it throttle eventually if it sat that way for 30 minutes? It's possible, mm -hmm. but this is something that's happening in the kernel. This is something that's yeah. happening um, actively, mm -hmm. and, and I didn't see it happen here. And how, I but I mean, to how often? Overnight. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you <laughs> off. <laughs> but how often would you, you know, be using your Pi to the point where you've maxed it out for a sustained period? That's like, it. That's why we're pushing this to its knees. We're doing this specifically to see would it throttle? Yeah. Would it get really, really hot? And it didn't. No. It didn't get super hot. I've seen Odroid XU4s get hotter than uh, 85 degrees. Right. And sustain that happily and not have a problem. Now, this is an interesting case because there's no heat sink whatsoever, and we're right. sitting at about 85 degrees. Mm -hmm. Now, getting a quick look at this as well, we've got an average temperature of 78.67, oh, pardon me, 6373. You folks see that? 78.6373 degrees. The lower that is, the lower the temperature at heavy load. And the average frequency, of course, is still 1.5 gigahertz. It stayed there and maintained sense. it, right? Right. So now I'm going to halt the Raspberry Pi 4, okay. which is to shut it down. I've lost connection to the Raspberry Pi 4. And I'm going to jump over here, and we're going to get a look at this El Arduino case. So as I make my way over here, folks, we're going to disconnect the Raspberry Pi 4 from its peripherals. We've shut that down using Halt. And let's get into this case. I can feel the heat coming off of that. I mean, 85 degrees. Oh, yeah. Oh, it feels smoking. You want to feel that? Yeah, feel I free. I do want to come over. Yeah, I feel free. Too. Yeah. It's like show and tell. Get your hands in here. That's right. <laughs> so the interesting thing, don't touch the processor, but anything else is fair game. Wait, which one's so Wow, that don't is... Don't touch the CPU. That is warm. Yeah, it is pretty warm, folks. Oh, yeah. Wow. What's interesting about the Raspberry Pi 4 is the heat dissipation occurs over the entire main board. So the PCB dissipates the heat so that it is uh, spread over the entire main board, and we're not going to have it like the Raspberry Pi 3, where it's very much focused on the CPU. CPU. Right. So this board is designed in such a way that it's trying to get that heat off of the CPU and into the main board, and I can feel that very much so in the uh, in these peripherals. And while I don't have a thermal thermal scanner in order to show you that, I can tell you that that's the case, and I will tell you as well that we are working on obtaining such a device. Now this is the El Arduino uh, aluminum case for the Raspberry Pi 4, and as I mentioned, we have looked at El Arduino cases in the past. I've been very very pleased with them. Um, this is a very nice aluminum Whoa. case. That looks nice. And doesn't that look interesting, eh? So let's get. A little further into the box, it's a little bit more in there. There we go. Um, so this is; these are just like non-slip uh, pads for the bottom of it, and a screwdriver. So let's open this up. You'll notice with the El Arduino case for the Raspberry Pi 4, there's a couple of things of note here. Um, one is that it is wall mountable. Do you see these wall mounts? Yes. yes. So you can actually hang this thing on the wall. Um, also, it has a touch sensor here that allows you to control the, uh, the fans, but the fans are also thermally controlled. So as the Raspberry Pi 4 gets hot, it's going to increase the, um, the speed of those two fans. Right. These are intelligently controlled fans. So let's get in here and see what it uh, what it looks like. So the screws are actually in here, out of the box. There we are, and there we have it. So you can see that this is not just these are not just fans that are powered by the GPIO. These fans are going into a controller circuit, and that is going to be connected to the Raspberry Pi 4's GPIO. However, okay. it's much more sophisticated than just direct like power coming off of that. And there we go, Raspberry Pi 4 is going to go in there. I have not removed the SD card, um, and it looks like it's going to just be a nice, snug fit. Look at that. Very slick. Yeah. And I like the aluminum uh, nature of these cases as well, because as we know, aluminum does what to heat? It takes it away. It kind of dissipates it and spreads it out, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. How easy is this to install? It's very easy. You didn't so even need the instructions. <laughs> I didn't. They're here. I if I need that. them, I have them. I'll show those to Jeff after the show. 
kill Randy. They're like, you did it all wrong. Yes. <laughs> what have you done? All right. There is one thing in the instructions that I need to know is how do I wire up this circuit board? Jeff or Sasha, maybe you have access to that information. Jeff. Uh, do I have access to I that? I feel like, do you close it before you wire it all together? Like, oh, there. there that's go. it. Okay. That's done. Okay. Uh, I can see that there's a little bit of a plastic film on this. So I'm going to remove that. Okay. If you ever get a new electronic device and you wonder why it looks scratched up, it's probably this plastic film. Yes. We had that, go. didn't we? So we did. Yeah, okay. That, yeah. yeah, you put the, the, like, you completely assembled it without plugging it in. There you go. Done. Well, here's the GPIO, because remember, the GPIO, the camera output, the SD card, everything is accessible right here. But, uh, and I can see the camera uh, connector there. Right. And what colors, uh, how am I going to connect this? Now, red is to what? Uh, red is to pin 4. Pin 4. So here's my GPIO on the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, so I've got pin 1, 2, 3, 4. So pin 4 and oh. blue or black. So, so that's all there is to it. Okay. Blue, or, blue or black um, is connected to pin 6. Uh, that is correct. All right. So that should be all there is to it. So what I like about this, look at how sleek this is. That looks good. I think so. I like how El Arduino has created a form factor that has actually encased the Raspberry Pi 4. Yeah, and it's like very low profile. Like, I mean, the fact Extremely. that the USB ports still stick out above the case. These, yeah. Do you guys see that? Look at that. So of these the cable are, was a little bit smaller. The cable I is kind of. There's three more cables in different colors, and just <laughs> so, so you can stress <laughs> which one to cut. Can you? Yeah. <laughs> can you push that in? I don't know. Maybe you could. Maybe if I t maybe if I paid more attention when I was putting it together. Think about that as you're putting it together. Maybe you could make that a little more streamlined. But yeah, you're right. The the cable does stick out when it's plugged into the GPIO. So that's like the one, like. Nah, that was probably a design flaw, if you could say. Not really a flaw, but they could have made something that was a little bit more baseline, yeah, straight, like flat. But if that's the only issue, like, yeah. come on. Yeah. It's really helpful that the cable is the same color as the table, really. Yeah. <laughs> now, Does that help? <laughs> now, you said that the like that touchpad, you can control the fan. So what, it's just a matter of, it's almost like a, a slider? No, no, it's just like a, like a touch lamp. Oh, gotcha. So you just oh, okay. touch right there. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm going to plug back in the Ethernet. Okay. There it is. So Ethernet is connected. Doesn't that look sexy? I'm sorry, guys, but that is sleek. I suppose that's one way to... It looks nice. <laughs> I like... I mean, I'm a geek through and through, but that looks really nice. It looks sharp. Yeah, look at that. And there's the two HDMI micro outputs that I was talking about. Yes. Plus, you've got the AV output still. Um, but HDMI micro, a little bit of a pain. Uh, anyone who has ever used HDMI micro, if you're using an adapter, you're probably going to be hard-pressed to find an adapter that will sit side-by-side side with this. Instead, I would recommend that you find a cable that has HDMI micro at one end and full-size HDMI at the other end. I'm going to plug in the USB-C, which immediately powered up these fans, and it uh, looks like it's good to go. Now, if I touch that, you see what happens, Jeff? Oh, yeah. So yeah. that's just a quick little t tap. Now, is How do that they feel like? What? With like, is there a yeah. lot of vibration? There's no vibration whatsoever. Okay. There's no sound. I'm going to hold this right up to my mic. You guys can see that it's <laughs> right up you to my mic. You see the top of your head, but. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there's, there's the, the sound that you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's okay, my shade now, for the day. When you touch All right, the I'm going to set this down and come over to the set. If you want to bring us up to, uh, to the wide shot there. Yeah. Now, when yeah. you touch the button to activate the fans. Yeah. Did they, like, are they going to stay on permanently, or will the computer take over? They're gonna, yeah, it's gonna, the circuitry is going to spin it up if it gets hot, right. spin it down if it gets cold, and, and it's going to automatically adjust the fan speed. So you don't have to worry speed. about, like, oh, I turned it on, I forgot to turn it off. It's not like that. Oh, no, no, and by default, as soon as the yeah. Raspberry Pi is powered up. So if the power goes out and you don't have a uh, UPS or, like, a, a Pi Voyager from Omslow uh, connected to your Raspberry Pi, 
then you, it will automatically turn back on the fans. Right. Okay. So what say we should run those same tests yes. and yeah. see how the thermals are affected on the Raspberry Pi 4 having placed this in the, um, uh, in the El Arduino uh, case with I the fans. I hypothesize. You think this is going to work? That this is going to run cooler. Ooh, I'm really curious to <laughs> know. Is. Straight out of the box. Stick around. We'll be right back. Before the break, we looked at the Raspberry Pi 4. We ran it through a NEM stress test and we brought it to its knees. We got it really, really hot to the point where, you know, even touching it, we could feel yeah. that even the USB ports, the, uh, the Ethernet jack was really, really hot. Yes. Now we've put an El Arduino case. This is an aluminum case with two intelligent fans on the Raspberry Pi 4. And with this, you know, the question is, you know, are we skewing results by, you know, we had it off for three minutes bit, while yeah. we were installing it. Did that make a difference? I don't think it really did. I mean, maybe like micro amounts, but right. fact is, is that the system is going to heat back up again as soon as we hit that with a NEM stress test. It'll yes. be interesting to see if the temperature reaches the 85.698 degrees that it got before. I'm really curious. What was the starting temperature of our test with the with no heat sink, no nothing? It was 69.627 degrees. 69.627. So back at NEMS Linux, I can actually type NEMS info temperature 45.27. Okay. 45.27 is what it is right now and it's it's running yeah okay so that's what uh, no don't you don't need to write that one down because no, that I, one's I, not a part of our nem stress test no, fair enough so but the, the stress test has not begun uh, but we know we're 20 we're, degrees yeah, cooler that's a big deal that's huge yeah forget oh, the firm wow. the oh, right, firmware yes. update that's yeah. supposed to drop it by like three degrees yeah so what's what so what is the let's just say nems info uh frequency and see, we are at 600 hertz right, right now. That's where you started. 600 before. megahertz, pardon me. That's where you started before. I knew that the other one was at 600 megahertz, but by the time we started the test, it was already running at 1.5. Yeah. Right. So yes, it has made a difference in those numbers. As soon as we run the stress test, it's going to immediately throttle up. Yeah. We're going to see that. And again, I can see that if we look at um, our other Linux window here. So we see our current load average is 0.13. Shall we begin our test? Yes. So this is on the Raspberry Pi 4 with the El Arduino case. I'm going to run NEMS stress. And here we go. The stress test has begun. Let's jump back over here and we see that we are sitting at 100% CPU usage. Now, just because we want to do this quickly, Jeff, NEMS info temperature, 55.991 already. Okay. And uh, averaging... Okay, so sit, oh, 56, yeah. And I can actually type watch, and I can see that temperature change. So 57.45. See if that changes as the oh, stress yeah. test goes on. 58 point, and it's, uh, you know, it's fluctuating up and down a little bit. See that? Um, 59.4, so we're hitting higher numbers. Now, I can also check the frequency in real time. At, remember, my stress test is happening in another window. Okay, so I'm SSH'd in using two different uh, windows here. So I can type frequency and see what I'm sitting at. So I'm at 1.5 yeah, gigahertz. So in, in pretty much immediately it says, okay, there's a lot of stuff happening. Let's crank up the CPU. Because the Raspberry Pi smart and says, well, we don't need all that processor power, so we're going to clock it down to 600 megahertz. But as right. soon as you start the stress test, of course, our base, our base speed is going to be 1.5 gigahertz right. because that's the speed that it's going to clock to. Now, one of the questions we had in from Ameridroid when you were running... Hi, Ameridroid when you were running the first test, yes. is, uh, is NIMS checking the speed of all of the SOC cores? No, it is not. It okay. is checking it's just the, the averages. No, it is not. the. So what he's asking, there are four cores. Right. Are we checking the thermals and the speed of every single one of those four cores? 
to answer that question accurately, the only way to do that would be to look at source code. Oh, okay. So, nano et, uh, no, user slash local slash nems slash nems script slash info dot sh. Um, user local share. I missed the share. Share frequency. And that's pulling from uh, CPU zero. So, could that be different? And Let's Paul's find also out. asking about the speed. <laughs> that is the frequency. Oh, okay, gotcha. Right? So that's, that's exactly what I'm about to show you. So that test is still running here. And let's go back to this. So we are only looking at CPU 0, which is the first core. Uh, oh, pardon me. I need to cat that. That is sitting at 60, uh, 600 megahertz right now. Interesting. Uh, let's go to CPU 1 is at 1.5 okay. gigahertz. Wow. CPU 2, 60, uh, 600 megahertz. CPU 3. So you see how averages are causing this to have a, uh, a different impact. 1, 2, 3. So, that, uh, so, so 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3 is your four cores of the processor. Right. So we have... There was three of them at 600. Yeah, and at one. that moment. Right because we're right at the end of the test. So yeah, the tests okay. were winding down. Right. And so three of the cores had clocked back down to 600 megahertz. One of the cores was still running at 1.5 gigahertz. But I think right. what you'll find is in those instances, it's going to be um, clocked high. So our lowest temperature was 43 point three two nine degrees Celsius. Jeff, how does that compare to the Raspberry Pi without the Aladino case, Jeff? So we were without the Aladino was we're at sixty nine point six two seven as a starting base. Yeah. Now as a factor of variability into this, it was running for an hour without that case. But to be fair, it was only shut off for Five minutes as we... Well, exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there could be some variation, but the a fact little is bit. it started with the fans already running and, and the aluminum case yeah. already cooling it down. Sure. So, it started at a, at a lower base. Fair enough. But look at that, man. It's 26 degrees less than the base of the Raspberry Pi without that case. Uh, okay, looking at the highest temperature, we're sitting, uh, well, we hit 61.348 degrees Celsius. 61 was the top temperature of the Raspberry Pi Which 4. Which is less than the starting temp without the case before. That is worth it, I would say. There we go. That's astounding. The no pun intended, but that's there. cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else have we got here? Now, slowest speed, if you will, is 1.5 gigahertz. The maximum speed also, 1.5 gigahertz. It never fell below 1.5 gigahertz. Now, do you guys want to touch this? Okay. Because we've just run this through a, a major stress test, just like we did with the Pi before. It should be significantly different. Yeah, it's significantly different. Do you want to feel this? Guys, I feel like I have to because we felt it yeah. before. Here they come. I'm off the set. Yeah, you They're guys, heading you over guys there. Can't I'm back see over the heat, to the But you can't see that. That uh, you know, that kind of just feels like pulling a wallet out of your back pocket. Kind yeah. Of oh yeah. That's it. There's nothing to it. There's n nothing. No heat whatsoever. Huh. It's like cool. That's interesting. How do you like that? that so th cool. the Aladino case is aluminum. And it, is, uh, it has the dual fans that are intelligent that will spin up as it gets hotter. Maybe that's why we're seeing the drop from, okay, we hit 77, and then all of a sudden, boom, 48. How'd that happen? The fans said, oh, let's do this. Yeah. yeah. Let's make this happen, guys. I wonder if there's a way to log the fan rotations. Oh, let's do all these things, folks. Let's do all these things. Because that, that would be fun to see. Like... Because you, know, you can look at the fan and be like, ah, oh, it's just going. But Graph that. But maybe you know it's like a, you know, a, a car engine where it's like you're lo you can't see the movement. It's going so fast. But the difference between you know, 2,000 RPMs and 3,000 RPMs is a big difference. But it still looks the same. Yeah. And no sound, no, like, no perceptible vibration or anything no, like that. Nothing. And, of course, the board itself is solid state. So is the Eladuino case worth the extra money? I'd say yes. Uh, well, I don't even ah. I don't want to say it. I want you to say it. Think about it for just a second. Is it worth it? So, yes, except that, yes. Except? Except. Oh, wait for this, folks. 
There wasn't a problem in functionality with the last one. It got hot, but it didn't change the function. Mm, interesting point. But by keeping it cool, are you going to prolong life? Sure you are. So That's I, a I do key think. thing. Yeah. But the other thing we, we didn't test, we talked about it with the first test, is maybe it's where it's been a sustained time frame of, you know, five minutes or something. That We're going to run it. this thing. NEMS stress is available on any NEMS server. I'm just, I'm just Edit like it. making lots of problems. Jeff, here. this is for you. NEMS stress. Edit it, folks. <laughs> first thing, how long do you want to run it for? Jeff? Ever. No, I don't know, like... I don't know, do, do, do 10 or 15 <laughs> Okay, minutes. That's all you need to change. That's all you need to change. Forever. You're never powering that thing down. I'm serious, dude. I'm going to write that out. I'm going to run that dot slash nems stress. Running the test for... A whole lot of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Grab That's Nems Linux from nemslinux.com, yeah, if you want to run the test on your own board. I, I'm, with, I'm with Jeff on this one. I don't see any downside to the board. I mean, it does cost you a little bit extra, but you are gonna, you're going to extend the life of the Raspberry yes. Pi. And, and when you're running something like a Nems Linux server, if you want to use it as a set-top box, if you want to use it for Plex Pi, for example... Mm -hmm. Even as a RetroPie gaming system, yeah. the yeah. cooler it can run, the better it's going to perform because, yeah, there are other peripherals, too, that get hot. That's Think right. about the USB. Like, it has USB 3, and you're going to have a hard drive connected to that because it's 10 times faster than USB 2. That's right. So you may as well connect uh, a drive to that, and, and you want the best performance. But, so it's not just the CPU that's going to be affected by heat, but also, as Jeff mentioned, the longevity of the board itself. Right. How long will it live? And it looks good. It looks So, I mean, at the end of the hot. day, if you're going to be a responsible pie owner, actively cool it. <laughs> there it is, folks. That's the Raspberry Pi 4 with the El Arduino case.